Hey there, Anjali here. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you all are doing well and good. Today, I'm going to read an interesting story to you. This is a beautiful story about friendship. As it said, friend in need is a friend indeed. What will you do if your friend encounters some problems? Will you help them or would you leave them? So that's the basic idea of the story. I hope you will enjoy it. And if you do, then please do like, share, and subscribe. Now, as for the story, the story is called Finding Portly and is written by Kenneth Graham. As for the author introduction, we'll do it later in the video. First, let's read the story. So, The story is called Finding Portly. The willow wren was hiding in the dark holes of the river bank, singing his delicate song. It was past ten o'clock at night, but the sky still held a faint light, and the heat of the day broke up and rolled away at the touch of the cool fingers of the short midsummer night. Mole lay stretched on the bank, still fainting from the stress of the day that had been hot and cloudless from dawn to late sunset, and waited for his friend, the water rat, to return. The water rat had gone to visit Otter, and was doubtless keeping it up late with his old friend. It was still too hot. To think of going indoors, so Mole lay on some cool dock leaves and thought over the past day and its doings. The rat's light footfall was finally heard approaching over the dried grass. Oh, the blessed coolness! He said as he sat down, gazing into the river. Silent and thoughtful. You stayed for dinner, of course," he said. The mole, after a while, simply, simply had to," said the rat. They wouldn't hear of my leaving before. You know how kind they always are, and they made things as jolly for me as they could, right up to the moment I left. But I felt terrible all the time, as it was clear to me they were unhappy, though they tried to hide it. Why do you think they were unhappy? Let's read further to find out. Mole, I'm afraid they are in trouble. Little Portly is missing again. What? That child said the mole carelessly. Why worry about it? He is always wandering off and getting lost and turning up again. He is so adventurous, but no harm ever happens to him. Everybody knows him and likes him. Some animal or other will come across him and bring him home again. Why we have found him ourselves miles from home and quite content and cheerful. Yes. But this time it's more serious," said the rat seriously. "He has been missing for some days now, and the otters have hunted everywhere, high and low, without finding a trace. And they have asked every animal too, for miles around, and no one knows anything about him. Otter is more worried than he'll admit." Young Portly hasn't learned to swim very well yet, and then there are traps and things, you know. Otter is not the type of person to be easily worried about any son of his, and now he is worried. When I left, he came out with me, and said that he wanted to stretch his legs, but I could see it wasn't that. So I questioned him, and got it all from him at last. 
he was going to spend the night watching by the ford you know the place i know it well said the mole but why would otter choose to keep watch there well it seems that it was that place where he gave potley his first swimming lesson continued the rat and it was where he used to teach him fishing and where young potley caught his first fish of which he was very proud the child loved the spot and otter thinks that if he came wandering back from wherever he is if he is anywhere by this time poor little chap he might come to the pot or if he came across it he would stop there and play perhaps so otter goes there every night and watches on the chance you know just on the chance they were silent for a time both thinking of the same thing the lonely sad animal crouched by the ford watching and waiting the long night through on the chance well well said the rat presently i suppose we should be thinking about going to bed but he never moved rat said the mole i simply can't go to sleep and do nothing even though there doesn't seem anything to be done we will get the boat out and paddle upstream the moon will be up in an hour or so and then we'll search as well as we can anyhow it will be better than going to bed and doing nothing just what i was thinking myself said the rat it's not the sort of night for bed anyhow and daybreak is not so very far off and then we can pick up some news of him from early risers as we go along they got the boat out and the mole took the oars rowing carefully out in the midstream there was a clear narrow track that faintly reflected the sky but wherever shadows fell on the water from bank bush or tree were as solid in appearance as the banks themselves and the mole had to steer cautiously tying their boat to a branch the friends landed in the silent and silver kingdom and patiently explored the hedges the hollow trees the ditches and dry water ways they worked their way up the stream in this manner while the moon did what she could though so far off to help them in the search till her hour came and she sank earthwards reluctantly and left them the field and river were once again held in darkness then a change began to slowly creep into the world the horizon became clearer fields and trees became more visible and the darkness began to drop away from them again a bird whistled suddenly and was still a light breeze sprang up and set the reeds and bulrushes rustling in silence they rowed steadily and soon they came to a point where the river divided a long backwater branching off to one side with a slight movement of his head red directed mole to take the backwater the creeping tide of light increased and now they could see the color of the flowers that adorned the water's edge on either side of them as they floated onwards the rich meadow grass was fresh and green as never before never had they noticed the roses so bright the willow herb so green the meadow sweet so fragrant then the murmur of approaching them began to take hold of the air and they realized that they 
were near the end of their expedition. Slowly, but with no doubt or hesitation whatsoever, the two animals passed through the water and moved their boat at the flowery margin of the island. In silence, they landed and pushed through the blossom and scented undergrowth that led up to the level ground till they stood on a little lawn of marvelous green set round with nature's own orchard tree, apple, wild cherry, and sloe. This is the right sort of place here. If anywhere, we should find him, said Red. And look, there he is, the little fellow. With a cry of delight, Red ran towards a cluster of flowers, within which lay the little round chubby form of the baby otter, soundly and peacefully asleep. Boatly woke up with a happy squeak and wriggled with pleasure at the sight of his father's friends, who had played with him so often in past days. The two animals led Boatly to the water's side, placed him safely between them in the bottom of the boat and paddled off down the backwater. The sun was now fully up and hot on them. Birds sang enthusiastically and flowers smiled and nodded from the banks. When they reached the main river, they turned the boat's head upstream towards the ford, where they knew their friend was keeping his lonely watch. As they drew near the family of Ward, Paul took the boat into the bank and they lifted Portly out and set him on his legs, gave him a friendly farewell pat on the back and set him on his way. They watched the little animal as he paddled along the path till he quickened his pace with shrill whines and wriggles of recognition on seeing his father. Looking from the river, they could see Otter jump up, dance and rigid from out of the shallows where he was crouched in silent patience, and could hear his amazed and joyous bark as he bounded up the path. Then the mole, with a strong pull on one oar, swung the boat around and let the full stream bear them down again wherever it would. Their quest has now happily ended. I feel strangely tired, Red, said the mole, leaning wearily over his oars as the boat drifted. It's being up all night, he'll say, perhaps, but that's nothing. We do as much half the nights of the week. At this time of the year, no, I feel as if I had been through something very exciting but frightening. And it was just over, and yet nothing particular had happened. But no answer came. He looked and understood the silence. With a smile of much happiness on his face, the weary rat was fast asleep. So that was the story. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do let me know in the comment section what you think of the story. Now let's discuss the author's introduction. So basically the story is written by Kenneth Graham. Kenneth Graham was born on 8th of March 1859 in Scotland. He was most famous for his children's classic The Wind in the Willows which he wrote in 1908. Before writing The Wind and the Willows, Graham published a collection of short stories for children and two books, The Golden Age in 1895 and Dream Days in 1898. So that was the story. As for the difficult words, you'll find a PDF in the description box below. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye.